Many people only think of Camp Randall as the football stadium that it is today, but its history actually reaches all the way back to the Civil War. Madison was a growing town in the 1860s, with a population of around 7,000 people, who were mainly from German and Scandinavian origins. When war broke out, Governor Alexander W. Randall took immediate action and called for Wisconsin soldiers. In typical Wisconsin fashion, the response to the governor's call was immediate and overwhelming. The Wisconsin Agricultural Society offered the Wisconsin State Fairgrounds as a camp for the Civil War soldiers. Colonel S. Park Coon of the 2nd Infantry rode out to the fairgrounds and decided the gentle sloping, well-drained landscape was perfect for drilling soldiers. Over 91,000 Wisconsin residents went to war and 71,000 of them trained at Camp Randall. Camp Randall also served as a prison camp for some Confederate soldiers. Prisoners began arriving in 1862. Camp Randall returned to its previous function as the state fairgrounds at the end of the Civil War in 1865 until 1890 when the fairgrounds were moved. Civil War veterans became upset in the 1890s when Camp Randall was to be sold off into subdivisions. General Lucius Fairchild marched down to the capital and convinced the state to buy Camp Randall. After purchasing it, they gave the land to the University of Wisconsin. The old horse racing grandstand became the new football grandstand and Civil War veterans requests for the area to remain Camp Randall were granted. And in 1912, the archway leading to Camp Randall that Badger fans pass under before every home game was built as a memorial to Civil War veterans. But the stadium was no longer big enough or safe enough for fans. In 1915, the bleachers on the north side of the stadium collapsed during a game against Minnesota. About 1,800 people were on the bleachers that collapsed, but luckily there were only minor injuries and no one was killed. This accident made university officials push harder for a new stadium, and so construction began in 1915. But World War I had begun, so construction was slowed because materials were needed for war. The new stadium had about 30 rows of concrete bleachers, and the concrete port in 1917 is still part of Camp Randall Stadium today. The old grandstands from the fair were moved to the east side of the field and Camp Randall was officially dedicated in November 1917. And the Badgers' first official game in the new stadium was against Minnesota and the Badgers managed a 10-7 homecoming victory. But tragedy soon struck again because in June of 1922, the old bleachers moved over from the fairgrounds and caught on fire. So these bleachers, along with the temporary ones on the north side of the stadium, were replaced with concrete seating. By the 1940s, enrollment at UW-Madison had greatly increased and there was a shortage of dorms, so 200 dorm rooms were added to the back of the football stadium. There were so many people returning from World War II that there was trailer housing added to the grounds of Camp Randall. By 1951, the dorms were no longer sufficient, so the students moved out and the athletic department moved in. A second deck was added in the 1960s, and after that, renovations to Camp Randall stalled until December of 2001. Over the span of four years, a $110 million renovation took place, including an increase to seating capacity, which is now around 80,000, and giving the playing surface a new field turf covering, and getting rid of the former pedestrian track. Today, Camp Randall is 93 years old. It is the oldest and fourth largest stadium in the Big Ten and one of the largest stadiums in the nation. Camp Randall is home to traditions such as the fifth quarter, jump around, student section chants, the singing of varsity, and so much more. Even though we have new traditions and the Civil War veterans would not recognize Camp Randall the way it is today, they would be proud to know that the name Camp Randall lives on.